Hey you guys, how's it going? Uh, this is for Computer Science 151L, Sections 2 and Sections 8 of the Spring 18 semester. Um, sorry I canceled class today, you guys. I am absolutely exhausted. And this takes about 15-20 minutes to teach, and I didn't see Santa around for another 30 making small talk twice. So this uh, is probably easier. Um, I will attach this M file at the end. Hopefully you guys can read this M file okay. Uh, if not, go ahead and open it when you get this um, with the link to this video and watch along. Um, your test will be given back to you this upcoming Monday uh, on the whatever the 70s, 16th, 23rd, I believe it is. Um, your quizzes and everything else will be in as well by then, uh, by this Friday. Your test scores will be in by Friday as well. Um, if you have any questions about upcoming assignments, please shoot me an email. I'll help you out as best as I can. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, we're looking here at polyfit and polyval this week. And so these two are some very helpful equations when it comes to graphing, right? So uh, polyfit, like it says here, basically assigns um, to an output variable the coefficients of your best fit line trend, right? And then polyval, on the other hand of that, uh, evaluates the equation at those new values. So polyfit gives you values and assigns them to something, and polyval evaluates those, uh, that equation at those new values. Uh, so the best thing, also, if you have any questions about what I'm sending you guys, go ahead and shoot me an email with, hey, I didn't understand this part of the video or this part of uh, your M file that you attached. Can you explain it more? And uh, I'll go ahead and do that for you guys. Anyway, so let's go ahead and do an example of this. Um, also, if you didn't do your exams, uh, like if you had to, didn't finish, and uh, Steve said you could redo it, and you didn't, um, come talk to me after uh, you get this. Email me. Um, anyway, so let's do an example, right? So first, let's make an x, right? We're going to have to do some graphing, so we're going to need an x. And let's make that x go from 0 to 10 by increments of 0.5. Next up, we'll need a y variable. And so uh, let's make our value 0, 5, 11, 7, 4, 8, 12, 14, 17, 21, 22, 24, 26, um, 30, 37, 40, 42, 43, 46, 48. That should be about the same size matrix. And uh, it's important to know that normally like you would get these in a data file, and so you would just assign your x and y by loading and indexing, right? So let's go ahead and just assign these values now. So we'll go if we put them in our command window down here to assign them, so that way now they're over here up in our workspace, right? <clears throat> so now that that's done, um, we're going to go ahead and plot these x and y's, right? x, y, and then make it look a little bit fancy. And so we'll go ahead and put this into our command window too. Um, I'm simply tapping in editor so that way you guys can get a look at what we're doing first. So our vectors aren't the same length, so let's go ahead and double check everything. <coughs> so 0 to 10 by 0 0.5. And we got 0, 5, 11, 7, 4, 8, 12, 14, 17. 21, 22, 24, 26, 30. Ah, oh, we're missing one. We should put a 33 here. We're down a size. All right, so now that that's done, we'll go ahead and reassign our y. All right, now we can see they're both by 1 by 21s. We should have checked up here. So next time, we check up there. We'll go ahead and do this plot up here. in our command window, and there we go. So now we have uh, these data points, but we don't have a line to them, right? So let's go ahead and enlarge this, take a quick look at it. So we have data points here. They're kind of hard to see, I guess, but they do exist. Um, and there's a number of ways to go ahead and apply a trend line to them. And I'll show you the code way, and then I'll show you the graph way. The graph way is kind of a cheating method, uh, I think, but it works. So we got that plotted, and so now we're going to hold on, right? Because we want to add something to our graph. So when we want to add something to our graph, we type hold on into our line. And so now we're going to make a variable 
we're going to say polyfit x, y, and 1. Now we're saying our x, our y, and then the degree to which we want to fit that to. So uh, we want to fit it to the first degree. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, a first degree is just a regular uh, polynomial equation. Uh, you just, it's x and y, right? And then you have x squared, x cubed, and you're going up into your second degree, third degree types of equations. And so now we're going to go ahead and take care of that. And let me just double check these notes. Yeah, so we're setting it to the first degree, which is what we want to do. And we'll go ahead and take that and assign these uh, to our workspace. Polyfit x, y. Make sure our variables are the same case. That's important. So we capitalize these, so we should capitalize uh, them in polyfit. So MATLAB went ahead and took care of that. So 4.8 and negative 0.8. So those are our degrees, our ends, or that's our those are our values. Sorry. And it, when it does this, it fits um, the data in y um, in a least square sense. Um, and so we'll go ahead and keep going from there. And so we'll say that uh, we're gonna do a y one now, right? Because we need a new polyval. We have we have assigned these variable or we have assigned this data to a variable over here at one, right? So we took our x and y data and evaluated it for a variable, and it's been assigned to there. So now what we need to do is evaluate at a new y, right? We need to evaluate that equation at a new point. So we're going to use polyval for that. And the best way to remember that is polyval has val in it, evaluate, right? And then polyfit fits a trend line to your data. So it's, it's in the names. So we're going to take polyfit, or polyval, and we're going to evaluate it at 1 with respect to x. That's what our equation's in, right? And so that's our new y1. So let's go ahead and get this data into our workspace. And there it is. It's popped up. y1's right over here. And so now we're going to have to plot this new data again. x, but we're going to do x. But instead of y, we're going to do y1, because that's our new data. And we'll do this in k, so we'll want it black. Right, and so we'll go ahead and run this now. We'll plot it. And our same figure should come up right over here. And so here we go. Now we have a trend line. And we can see that it goes through a majority of our points, right? Or at least we probably have the same amount on top as the same amount on the bottom. This is what's known as a best fit line. And so we'll go ahead and close this figure. Um, and then you can try another polynomial now to like the eighth or ninth degree to show a better fit. So let's go ahead and mess with that, right? So let's go ahead and uh, reevaluate some of these things. So we'll go ahead and pull this up. And uh, instead of this one polyfit x, y, comma one, let's uh, let's see what happens when we go up to like the fifth degree. So we'll reevaluate one, and then that means we need to evaluate y one. And now we see we have six options. When you evaluate to the first, you have two options, right? But when you evaluate to the fifth, you have six. So the amount of uh, variables you get back in response to this is n plus one. So n plus one is going to be your response there. So we'll go ahead and run that. Let me change this up top here too, just in case. And now we have a new y1 matrix. And so now we're going to want to plot, oh, come on, copy. We're going to want to plot this new y1 matrix, right? So we'll run that. And there we go. But it, I guess we should probably plot this too, huh? So we'll go like this. And do a hold on. Run it. And now that hold on is on. We'll go ahead and replot this. And now you see, like, this is a closer trend line, right, to our original graph. And it's almost running through most of these points. So we'll go ahead and blow this up just to see it a little bit better. But yeah, so it's, it's running right along a lot of these points now. And so let's go ahead and just up this one more time, right? So let's make this to, like, the ninth degree. So if we're doing it to the ninth degree, we should expect 10 terms in our one, right? So let's go ahead and just close that figure, which we already did. And uh, we'll go ahead and replot this. And 
and then we'll tell it to hold on again. And then we'll run this up to the ninth degree. And now we have 10 data points, right? And you can see that S column through 10. So then we'll go ahead and make a new Y1. And we'll go ahead and replot this. And we'll open up that figure. And now you can see it's run through almost every single point, right? We're pretty much there now. So let's see if we can mess around with this. So let's go to tools right here on our graph. Sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't. It kind of depends. Um, let's see. So we're going to want to mess with our graph a little bit. Put a basic fitting over here. It should pull it up. So it shows you two data points, and then over here you can select like to what degree the polynomial you'd want. And so you can go ahead and select that. And then it usually tells you like, hey, like maybe this isn't the best idea. And then you'll say, oh, that's okay. And then you can also show the equation to your graph too, which is the cool part. So now you're you have this equation here without even having to do anything to it. So you get an equation to your graph and you get a best fit trend line. And then you can plot residuals and that's just basically like your error percentages. But then you can also add in like different like degrees at the same time just to kind of like go and show like hey like this is how it deviates as you get messier and messier. So let's go from a linear all the way up to our 10th degree polynomial which is what we were messing with here in the first place. And we see the, the, see the stark difference between the two. Um, so we, this black line here, remember, is our ninth degree polynomial. This green line here is our 10th degree polynomial. These blue dots are what we initially had, and this orange line is our linear fit. So you can see the rise in accuracy there. And let, let's go ahead and go back to um, this basic fitting. And we'll, we'll take this 10th off, right? We'll, we'll go ahead and slap back on the nine. And it gives it a smoother curve as well, which is the cool part. This is thus your best fit at, that you possibly can do. Um, and then your equation has some significant digits. We'll go all the way out to five just for the heck of it. Um, and we'll close basic fitting. And we'll look at these coefficients. And let's go back over to here. And we're going to want to check out some of these values, like our first 10. And so our first. Look at, look at this tenth value, right? Negative 0.2681. Let's go back to this figure. And this last value over here is negative 0.2681. So you see, these are the coefficients that you're going to end up getting. And because it's the ninth degree, we have nine x's, right? x to the ninth, essentially. And so the reason we get 10 terms is because we get the c term over here on the end, like we talked about in our last class, how you had an x, y, and a z equals c. Well, now you have x to the ninth plus x to the eighth x to the seventh all the way over to c and that's going to equal your y term so you can either do this on the graph like here let's just let's go ahead and comment all this stuff out except for the hold on and we'll see how to do it just by the graph and we will comment all that out we'll throw a clear clc close all up top We'll go ahead and run this. And so there we go. Now we have our new figure. It plotted, but that's about it. But now that I did that, I want to know the data trends, right? So we're going to go to basic fitting. And I want to find the best fit possible line. And you know, this isn't really linear here. So I'm thinking to myself, well, I know linear might not be my best bet. Um, but maybe like. Like, I don't know, this kind of looks like a third, like a cubic term, almost. And wow, you know, it, it almost fits that. But I mean, we still have these two outliers up here, so maybe it's not a cubic, maybe it's a sixth. Just so we get that little hump in there, right? For those of you who have taken Calc 2 or Calc 1 and understand what that means. So we, we get a little bit of a hump, but we know that like that term is not the best. So let's go look at the ninth term. 
and just ignore that error. It doesn't really mean much. And we're almost there, right? And then we throw on that tenth term, which brings us a little bit tighter into our points. And so this is all that this one allows, right? It only allows us to go up to the tenth, which is kind of problematic, right? Like, because we're not exactly there. We're not getting that perfect equation. So that's where the cost and benefit kind of loses here when you're doing it just by this graph. Because then you can always just come back here and change this ninth to like a twelfth. And we'll know like that twelfth is probably going to be a little bit more accurate than the other one was, right? So we'll take off all these values here. And we'll go ahead and see if this one. There we go. And we get some really accurate values. We'll go ahead and reevaluate our y1. And we'll go ahead and plot this. We don't have our data points on anymore. And we see it's a little bit rougher. So let's see if we can get this back on. We'll go ahead and get these three things over here. And now you can see we're running almost exactly through all these points. It's not as smooth as it should be. And that's where you lose you know, the benefits of the doing the basic fitting. The basic fitting will always give you a smooth curve, but you're only limited up to the 10th degree. If you do it on MATLAB, you don't get that smooth of a curve um, via code, but you can fit it up to the nth degree that you want. And then if you're looking for your equation, you know that that's just going to be your y1 values right over here, right? So. Or sorry, that's going to be your one values right over here. So your one values are going to be those that you get from your equation. And you can just see that it's a 1 by 13 double. And you can get those values from right over here by going to your workspace, opening them up, and clicking on that. Uh, so that's PolyFit and PolyVal. Um, PolyVal will uh, evaluate the equation at a new value. PolyFit will assign that output variable to the coefficients of that best fit trend line for you. Um, and that's pretty much it, you guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I'll go ahead and upload this and send you guys the link to it. Um, if you watched it all the way through, thanks. Um, in fact, if you watched it all the way through, um, I'll give you guys, and you can prove you watched it all the way through, I'll give you five extra credit points if you send me this word in an email. If you email me the word taco, uh, I will go ahead and add five extra credit points to something. I'll figure that out. Um, anyways, thanks you guys. Have a good afternoon.